Hey everybody, just wanted to give you a quick walk around of a few of the modifications I made to my uh, Patrol Boat Riverine or PBR made by Pro Boat, which is a 118th scale version of the U.S. Navy's Riverine patrol vessel that was uh, used during the Vietnam War. Coming in at about uh, 118th scale, which is 21 inches from bow to stern. Uh, for those who are familiar with the movie Apocalypse Now, this is the same boat that was featured uh, in that movie as well. As for myself, I'm, I'm kind of a scale modeler. Uh, I'm not into tricks or spin outs or uh, excessive speeds or anything like that. I, I like to keep the, uh, the speed of, of my vessel's uh, scale. So when you're operating, uh, particularly on uh, flat, calm water, they look quite realistic and convincing and they're definitely a lot of fun to, uh, to drive around. Um, so with that, uh, there are a few things that I did to this boat that are quite easy and quite simple, uh, particularly for folks who are just starting out like myself, um, that really helped me to enjoy the boat uh, a lot more. And again, they're, they're quite cheap and quite easy. Uh, first and foremost, for me anyway, is uh, seaworthiness. I want to make sure that uh, I get the least possible amount of water in this boat as, as I can. And uh, certainly you're going to get some water inside and particularly that's going to come from your engine compartment where the drive shaft comes through and marries up with the engine coupler here so in that gap right there is where water will often end up spitting out into your hull and so that's a typical place there's not much you can do about that you can try to pack it with grease like I have uh, but that only does so much good and um, certainly you need to service your drive shafts and grease those uh, whenever possible. But any other place uh, where you have seams and you can kind of see in there where the uh, this black piece which is your uh, which houses your drive shaft where that marries up with the stern you can see that I've got some white goop back there and that stuff is actually a uh, Loctite's uh, marine adhesive sealant which is actually for real boats and it works extremely well in models it's flexible it cures quickly uh, it seals up very well it's a little goopy but um, really really will help you seal up cracks or crevices um, not that there are cracks in this but uh, certainly there are places where parts marry up and water could potentially intrude so I seal those up as best as I can with that adhesive sealant other people use goop and um, other um, sorts of epoxies and, and whatnot, but I just figured that uh, if you can use that on real boats, that'll work well on a model, and it does. <clears throat> the other thing that I did, and you probably notice it, is that given the fact that there's definitely going to be water coming in, and it's not much, um, I borrowed a little trick I learned from uh, kayaking, actually, and that's the use of sponges to soak it up. Uh, instead of having all that water sloshing around, and potentially harming your electronics, which are supposedly waterproof, uh, as well as your engines, which are kind of not waterproof. Um, <clears throat> what this does is uh, absorbs all that water, keeps it contained in one place, and uh, it allows you to keep the boat nice and level because water's not sloshing around from bow to stern back and forth and will prevent it from capsizing should you take on a lot of water. Uh, for me today, I uh, ran this for approximately 25 minutes and when I squeezed out the sponges I probably got uh, about an ounce of water out of them which uh, is nominal nominal for uh, for this particular boat and um, if you're getting a cup or so of water in there uh, that's probably excessive you you probably have something uh, going on with your boat so you want to check that out but uh, at any rate uh, the sponge works very very well I highly recommend it it's super cheap super easy to do and uh, it'll obviously save your you uh, some time effort and money when you have to replace all the electronics and engines in there uh, <clears throat> so that is the seaworthiness part of it the other part for me that is important is range. Uh, after all, with remote control hobbies, it's, it's great to be able to drive a car or fly a plane or maneuver a boat as far away as possible and see, uh, see how far you can get out and, and, and see things, right? So for me, uh, I noticed that the receiver 
is, and the antenna are crammed down in this engine compartment. You can't see them here, but you can see the engine compartment. It's actually quite spacious. However, uh, the antenna is down in the, uh, the hull. And I figured, well, you know, maybe you can squeeze out some more range if that antenna were mounted externally. So I noticed that there are two holes here. There's one on the port, one on the starboard. And these are intended for the antennas that were mounted on this for real in, uh, in Vietnam when this was used. On the model, they have absolutely no function whatsoever. And it just so happens that the hole for that antenna mount is just slightly larger than the diameter of the antenna itself. So it just made sense to run it through there and up onto the top of the bridge. I just kind of ran it through the light there and it works quite well. Um, it stays put and uh, who knows, if it buys me another uh, 50 to 100 yards of range, then that's a great thing. Although I've not quite uh, tested it versus having the antenna inside the hull, but uh, eventually I will, uh, I will do that. Um, since we're looking at the lights, might as well turn on the lights. That's the best part about this boat. It's, it's a lot of fun. <clears throat> I love the lights on this. Um, so lastly, the, the third thing that I did um, was to install a very small camera on this. And uh, one caveat here before y'all beat me up, uh, this is not a GoPro. You're not going to get super high quality video on this thing, but I wanted an initial capability to stick on here uh, since I'm relatively new to RC boating that uh, if it got wet or if this thing were to somehow capsize um, I wouldn't really care and this particular camera is super light it weighs only 11 grams um, so you're not going to affect any balance or center of gravity on the boat at all um, it's extremely small it's not intrusive it doesn't really uh, impact the 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 fit and, and function of, of the boat at all. It's very easy to use. Certainly it's very easy to mount. Uh, clip on, clip off. There's really nothing to it. Uh, and you know what the best part is? Is that it was only $10 on Amazon. That's right. I'm a cheapskate. So uh, $10 was, uh, was a pretty small investment for a camera that, hey, at this point in time is good enough. And if you're a beginner like me and um, you're not necessarily interested in high definition video, but you want to just go out and capture a little something while you're out there, uh, look at waterfowl or turtles or whatever. Um, this is actually a good little camera to, to start out with. Um, so I highly recommend it. So those are a few of the modifications that I have uh, made thus far. Some things in the future to consider, uh, not only for myself, but others is uh, in this little box where the sponge is, that's actually intended for a servo so you can uh, turn the turret. Uh, if you do that though, if you choose to go that route, certainly you'll need a different uh, receiver that has an additional channel so you can add that to it. In addition, uh, I think a sound module is a great way to upgrade these. Um, that RC sound, that whine and the sound of those, those little motors back there um, certainly isn't realistic and um, you can even make your own sound module um, and make this sound like a real boat. Uh, also, a little weathering for, uh, for those of you who are into real detailed realistic models. Uh, this comes out of the box looking obviously quite new and unused, but uh, there are some great videos out there of people who have weathered these and make them look much more realistic. And lastly, what I will probably do is put some sort of uh, first person video camera on it so I can transmit uh, to myself while I'm driving this around. When I do that, I will definitely post some video so you can see that as well as uh, what my uh, camera looks like on the boat itself. I'll post some video of uh, th that this video has uh, captured as well so you can see uh, how good or bad it is. But hey, at this point in the game, it's something, it's cheap and it's easy to put on your boat. These are again, very small, cheap upgrades, but certainly if you don't do anything else, I highly recommend the sponge technique. Um, that's a real easy way to protect your electronics, protect your engines, keep your boat from capsizing, whether it's this or another boat. And um, that's about it. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know if you have any questions and I have fun out there.